the Sort of the Standards Constitutional <laughs> Oversight Committee. Um, Julie McManus has uh, indicated that she's going to be a bit late, so we won't be able to meeting for her to come. And an apology from Chris Jones. Can you put your microphone on, please? Thank you. Um, Chris Jones has sent her apologies, and Andy Davis is, um, is going to deputise for her. Can I start by asking members if they've got any declarations of interest? No. no? Okay, good. No. Um, and the first item on the agenda is the report on webcasting, um, the project update and option paper. Um, Vicky, do you want to talk us through it? So the report you've got in front of you was the one that's gone to the steering group um, and then SLC and we'll just have to come back from there. But Vicky, do you want to talk us through it? This part of just introduce the, the report members and then um, Patrick will give you some more detail because he's been the, the lead from committee services on this particular project. Um, the proposal to introduce webcasting was first considered back in 2016. Um, the capital budget allocation of £225,000 was confirmed by full council um, in March of 2017. And then a procurement exercise was undertaken. Um, the procurement was to procure a webcasting solution to screen and record uh, council meetings. Um, we also looked to procure an audio-visual solution uh, to replace the current facilities in the town hall, um, that's the council chamber, the civic hall, and the committee rooms one, two, and three. Because I think members will be aware that the, the equipment was, was getting old, and we were having a reducing number of microphones that were available at work. Um, and also, to we procure, we're looking to procure a replacement um, for the council's electronic voting system um, in the council chamber, uh, and also new microphones in the council chamber as well. Um, and following the competitive tendering process in January of 2018, uh, the contract was awarded to the contractor Public Eye um, for a period of, uh, of three years. And um, the, the purpose of this report tonight um, is to provide the committee with, a, with an overview of the current status um, of the, um, the, the, the process um, in respect of the webcasting project. Uh, and also to provide feedback and comments that we've received from the senior leadership team um, and from the members equipped the steering group. We weren't able to actually uh, get a meeting of the group, but the members of the group have provided feedback. Um, and then we were inviting this committee to give us their um, views regarding the various options um, in relation to the number of meetings to be webcast in the future, uh, the style of meeting minutes going forward now we have webcasting um, and the staffing resource that, that we will need. Um, so as I say, Patrick has been, been leading on this project um, and he will um, update you on the feedback that we've had um, and, and the various issues that have arisen along the way. Sorry, Chair. Can just ask before we go on. The, the contract that was awarded in January this year was that awarded by the government? So we can't stand the microphone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Chair. Yeah, the contract that was awarded in January this year was that a decision taken by us? It wasn't a government decision. It gives the impression that it was a, a decision taken to cover all the councils in England and Wales. So who, who took the decision to award the contract? It was. Locally, was it? Was locally. locally awarding the contract, although yeah. the decision to broadcast is, is one that's been recommended yeah. at the national level. Yeah. But the contract awarding is local, I think. Okay. 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 Chair, can I just beg be your indulgence for a minute and just ask for some legal advice? Can you tell Sir Jerry has arrived? Um, I was sitting in as a deputy, but on Jerry's clock, he walked through that door at 501. Would it be. 501, I looked in. Would, would it be in order for Jerry then to sit as the full member? Do you have any objections to No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Vicky, for the introduction. Uh, I'll probably go over some of the points that Vicky's raised, but just for clarity, just to get you through um, where we've come from and the point where we're at and the, uh, the information that we need from the committee as to where we go forward. Okay, obviously the purpose of the report is to give an update on the status of the webcasting project and also to give you feedback from 
SLT and from councillors who are members of the uh, members of the equipment steering group. Obviously, the views your views are requested, um, and our feedback, you know, the responses that we've had already. Um, it's recommended, or I would suggest that the, uh, all the views be consolidated and reported back to the Director of Governance and Assurance, um, because it's we, we've got to the stage uh, where I don't think all the views can be taken in isolation. All the information needs to be fed back to the Department of Planning um, in, in view of budgets and possible restructuring. Uh, in terms of background, uh, this project uh, came about or was really, really kicked off in 2016 under the previous head of legal and member services with a number of uh, requests and recommendations uh, for its implementation. Uh, the capital budget was agreed in February 2017 and was confirmed at full council in March 2017. Uh, I was appointed project manager for, the, for, for this webcasting project in August of, this, uh, of that year. Uh, actually the third project manager uh, uh, at that stage. Uh, the project initiation document I inherited uh, soon became clear that there were some amendments required um, which would impact on the tendering process and as such the tendering process was extended to allow for some technical things to be added in and you know, to consolidate the uh, project into a, a more coherent um, corporate project. Uh, there are areas of variation, these included that weren't exclusively uh, to do with the council chamber, revamp, re 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 replacement of the uh, of the microphone systems there and also the committee room uh, screens and projectors and uh, amplifiers etc. Um, we had established a project board uh, and it first met in October of uh, 2017. Uh, this is uh, an officer group that included the head of legal services or the director for governance insurance, uh, members of staff from the facilities team, uh, the uh, ICT, communications, you know, a, a, a really corporate approach because it impacted on everything that the council does. Um, even taking into account the variations to the initial tender, um, the selection of the contractor was decided on time and in line with the project plan and all the deadlines were met. In December 2017, obviously there were budget constraints and issues that had to be considered um, and SLT were consulted on the matter bearing in mind that the council chamber needed new microphones, uh, the, com the committee rooms were down to our last eight working microphones and the speakers and projectors were reaching the end of their life in the committee rooms. Uh, we tendered, you know, this was all part of the parcel of the tender. Um, we now have 40 brand new microphones which could be used uh, across all the committee rooms in Morsi Town Hall and are able to link to mobile equipment that we can use um, in other other buildings or other other public buildings and private buildings elsewhere in the borough. Um, more, than, more than enough to sufficiently see us through to the end and beyond the end of the three year contract. We actually purchased them uh, because they're obviously brand new under guarantee so there's a, a, a lot of thinking going on in uh, future proofing it. Um, in February 2018, after the contract was awarded, a uh, statement of works was agreed with the contractor. There were challenges, you know, we, we admit that, uh, to do with the timing of the uh, early stage of the installation. But as a result of that, we had some, we extracted some benefits. Uh, we had uh, some much improved cameras in the Civic Hall um, and much improved equipment for the, mo for the mobile equipment. Um, the the minor <coughs> incurred there meant that we got the very, very latest technology. Uh, installation went ahead uh, along with our project plan and the first live broadcasts uh, were, or first live broadcasts were the mayor making and annual council uh, as planned. And since then we've been webcasting uh, various meetings uh, along the line as they, as they come along. Um, the voting system, as Vicky mentioned, in, uh, continues uh, to be part of the project. That was installed, and members were offered sight of the or are offered sight of the, um, of the equipment, and we'll be doing some training and 
demonstrations uh, as and when members have requested. Um, we do have one scheduled for ahead of the next special council meeting. Um, it's very, very simple to use, but obviously we'd like members' views on, on the displays because um, there are a number of options on how we display voting. Uh, the purpose of today, obviously, is to do with the options paper before you. Uh, there are three key areas that we'd like a steer from members on. One is about the number of meetings that we broadcast. Two is also the style of minutes um, in terms of how we record the uh, our meetings in the written word. And obviously, we'd like a member's view on officer support for, for the meetings. Those results will be fed back into the Director of Government's Insurance. Uh, I give you uh, the, the feedback that we've had so far from councillors. Councillor Blakely uh, provided feedback, obviously, he's here, he can provide his own view. Um, Councillor Steve Williams uh, suggested uh, or recommended options A for all three in the report. Uh, the reasons being that, he's in, that we've invested a lot of money in the equipment and to use it to its full capacity. Uh, he says he realises that the options are most costly but feel we should go there first to see how the scheme can be and then maybe consider re reducing it later if needs be. Um, if we did it, if he said if we did it the other way around, we might be content with what we've got and settle for second best. Um, Councillor Chris Carubia. Um, again, a similar, similar response. Uh, initial thoughts is to go for maximum usage. Although you realise that it's the problem most costly, it would give, give us the benefit of seeing what could be achieved uh, when fully using, used, utilising the system uh, and the cost to purchase and implement it. Um, once again, run, running it to assess that that level we can throttle back if required. His choice would be options A, A, A. Uh, Alan Brain also provided comments. He said that uh, obviously as a new member, uh, he wasn't party to the initial um, decision. Uh, he probably wouldn't have supported that, that proposal. But however, um, now, that, now that we're here, his view to, would be to opt for option B in covering meetings. So only covering key meetings. Um, Bearing in mind that nothing would be concealed apart from exempt items, obviously the meetings would still remain open to the members of the public to attend. Uh, for style of minutes, you opt for option A, retaining the current house style, providing more easily checked permanent record. And the option, uh, for the third option, in terms of officer support, you would rule out option B, placing too many demands on the operator clerk. That's if we have one person taking minutes parking meeting and uh, dealing with the webcast. Um, he felt that there could be better to explore an option C in terms of staffing, but would otherwise favour option A. Um, feedback from SLT, this has come direct from the Chief Executive. Uh, he requested from me a suggestion as to the meetings that we webcast. Uh, I provided that to him and that's the paper that's been circulated to you. Uh, it really means 85 meetings in a year, uh, focusing on obviously cabinet council, um, planning, audit risk, all the scrutiny committees. Um, the reason why uh, we didn't or didn't suggest um, constituency committees at this time was that the technology at the sites that we might be using might, may or may not have um, broadband access. So although we could take the equipment to constituency committee meetings and record them and put them on the website, um, that, that, and that's an option that members may wish to discuss, um, we, wouldn't be able to get, we wouldn't be able to guarantee that we could webcast. Uh, so we're really nervous. It's, it's in my hands. Thank you very much. So the discrepancy is around the number of um, total number of public meetings. Sorry, total number of public meetings are 111, and the uh, suggestion from SLT is 85, and that's because of the constituency. Uh, yes, Chair, it's also to do with um, the licensing committees. Um, obviously, a number of the licensing panels are um, not. Not necessarily public meetings, or they start off in public, um, but then members of the public and press are excluded because of the nature of the business. So and they, they also tend to last 
uh, on average about half an hour or so. So there's a lot of time in setting up and taking down. Okay, so um, we've heard what the uh, members of the steering uh, group have to say. I have to say they are they do accord with my opinion, but can we hear from members around the table what they think on those reactions? Yes. Yes. Thanks, Jim. Um, my view from the steering group point of view was having the best of the equipment, we should use it to, to its full. Having said that, I've never looked at these figures. I just wonder what the purpose is at all. Sorry. Yes. Having looked at the figures for the viewing figures, I just wonder what the purpose is at all. We, we spent 225000 that. I understand the need for new money pounds. I don't understand the need for new electronic voting system in the council chamber when we know for our hands up. Who requested that? Can I ask who requested that? No, well, you can ask, but I'm afraid I'm not able to does, does, does anybody know who requested the electronic voting system? Did any members request the electronic voting system? Who would have been the, who would have been the members who were consulted on that? Uh, sorry, Chair, um, Casper, I, I don't have that information. I don't know. I'm assuming that it was part of the um, Head of Eagles uh, initiation paper uh, at the time in 2016. But we don't know if any members requested the electronic voting system. Uh, Councillor Anne Blackland was the lead on the project at the time. I don't know. Okay. So, so. Go back to the options. So, okay. so having, having said we should use it to its full, we, we've now spent all this money. Why spend it? Let's spend it on services that people want, not things they don't want. They clearly don't want web testing because they're not viewing. Just like they don't want them to view because they, they're, they're not interested in that. This half a million pounds we've got to save and spend on services. So are you suggesting we don't proceed with web casting? I am. In total? In total. Well, that's a view that we will feed back as a, as a property, I would think, a minority view. But Adam? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Nearly. That's not like I've been here before, too, I think. No, no. Obviously, you didn't make enough of an impact, I'll sign with that. I did, actually, because I remember writing when I was the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, just on the report, first of all, it says, uh, I think it's a bit misleading, if not disingenuous, financial implications that are non arising directly from this report, when clearly there are. Um, of course, the staffing results straight away that we're talking about immediately within all of the options. Um, I mean, looking at the figures there, we're talking about, I'm presuming we're talking about having one operator as opposed to two or three, which some of the other uh, council here to have. So the best possible option is one. Um, would it not be uh, feasible if we're going to have it at all? And just to touch on what council, council Blakely has uh, said with regard to viewing figures that clearly the through the floor. Um, I'm all for transparency, but if no one wishes to do it, do we really need to spend uh, more of uh, taxpayers' money on something that effectively they can get from some of our uh, general public who are sitting here and actually filming the, the today and will no doubt continue to do? Um, so, is, is there no way that it could be a fixed camera um, which just does the best um, with zero staffing options? Uh, because clearly there is an arm cost and there will continue to be. Also, for one person, I'm guessing that's again very difficult to actually manage with one person. Um, thanks, Tony. I, I think the first thing I'd say to you is decisions about, um, they're not the areas where we've been asked to focus our attention on today. Um, Chris has given an opinion as to what he thinks the future is. You're actually saying explore other areas. I'm asking views on those options that are presented to us today in this report. So do you want to just try yeah, and... Yeah, I mean, I can, I can coin it better, none of the above in that case. None uh, of the above. Uh, because I, I, don't think, um, I, I don't think we've adequately looked at other options which could be automated options whereby there are no one cost apart from this least uh, pressing up, which again could be automated if it was actually on a uh, movement basis. Okay, none of the above. Phil? Mm. I just need to get my head round the technology. As I understand it, when a member turns on the microphone and speaks, the camera somehow chooses them. And therefore, a lot of that process is automatic. I've got two things. I caused some humming to occur. I think that was me, too. Right. So, the first issue is transparency. 
I must be uh, not unique, but I've watched some of the um, meetings. I was unable to attend a particular meeting, so I did follow it later. I have spent time studying Cheshire West and Cheshire's website for particular issues that are of interest to people down my end of the borough. Uh, and I take the view that openness is important, especially with the decline of the local press. Now, the, the decline of where you want the middle of that, as one of you moves to be more based on what might turn on the web rather than paper, paper based, paper based, paper based, and paper based, you know. Um, so I think I have to move the times being a dinosaur and expect that the people will gradually get into looking at what happens in the local democracy. That we have it's gone off to a quiet start. We haven't done a fanfare about announcing that we're webcasting and citizens can view it on them. It's they gradually picked up the fact. Now, my big appreciation of it is from a particular funny application out of the 19th of July. You can leave my ward. Uh, and the figures for the 19th of July meeting suggest that where there's an issue that people can tell each other, you can see what's gone on, why it's gone, and what happens to the meeting, there will be people who come back to see what went on and try and follow the proceedings. So I think there are clear benefits. Uh, I would like to see extension to the constituency committees. But if there is proper speaker equipment at constituency, which is this kind of thing, people can actually hear what's going on, that would be very helpful to some of those rooms that we meet in from experience. I'm not the best acoustically. And for someone who's getting increasingly deaf and ought to wear two hearing aids, but can't be, um, doesn't get around to because coffee machines and noise, then I think we have to take account of the needs of people who have hearing difficulties as well in the use of the new equipment. Uh, I would like to see the use of the equipment of the constituency committees and recognise that that's going to be portable stuff. It might be live because there aren't the wires or electronic means to transmit it, but it could be shown later if people are particularly um, interested in seeing them. So I'm not going for it for cost, I'm going for it for opening up our democracy. Now, an issue has been raised about notes and clerks. Very difficult for people to have their mind on two or three things going at once. A committee clerk uh, never quite knows when a debate is going to come to an end or when somebody's going to move something um, and therefore has to have their eyes and ears and sense exactly what's going on in a meeting and be prepared to, to write down something and record it at a key moment. So I don't think we can actually manage having a committee clerk doing control of the equipment as well as being. So, uh, there's some issue of views. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Angie? I have a to you. Yeah, I, I don't think we've got figures over a long enough period of time to see what the pattern of usage is, whether that's going up, whether it's whether it's going down. So my view would, would be that, that we need to kind of carry on for, for longer than to see what the view figures are. And I think there was a point that Phil made about if we promoted this in off as well so that people do know, you know, when you're launching something you can take time for things to come off the ground. So I think for, for the time being that we should um, carry on doing the meetings and I would favour the, the meetings that I propose here for, um, for the time being. In terms of the um, minutes, I, I would go with option A while currently retaining um, you know, the current style of minutes and I think again that's something we can review further further down the line. In terms of the um, officer support, um, I agree with what everybody else has said. It's not possible for, for one person they have got you know one pair of hands to, you know it's too much to do all that. In terms of whether you could ask the other staff to um, help with that, I think that's a matter for officers. I'm not sure about what people's capacity is to do that. And if we couldn't pursue option C then, then obviously I'd go for option A, the retention of the current staff levels. But I think we need to kind of promote it better and, and then look at the figures in a year hands. Yeah, thank you, Chair. As far as the options are concerned, I think I go with all the options for option A, for the reason that people have already said. But on the question of webcasting, 
and in favour of that in principle. I remember the debate that took place in the country before Parliament was ever televised. People said it's going to cost too much money, nobody will ever watch it, etc. I mean, try to take that away now. You know, if any government now said, oh, we're not going to televise Parliament anymore, there'd be an absolute uproar. And I think the situation we've got now is, I've, I've often heard people complaining, it's difficult always to get to the town hall. Even when you do sit upstairs in the public gallery, you can't see, you can't hear properly. This would keep give people, and maybe people who are not able to get out of the house that easily, the option to sit down and engage and listen to what's being done in their name. So I think that's a positive thing. I think many people would welcome it. So in principle, and I think you know, where Councillor Blakely is talking about rejecting the whole principle of webcasting on the grounds of cost, I think we've got to give it a go. I think many people out there would welcome that. Okay, um, that's right. Put it again. Yeah. What, what I've noticed is people like myself were not really interested in watching the webcast unless it means something to us. Mm. Now, in the last few months, I don't know if you've noticed this, but all of the, there's been a lot of decisions and people are now starting to look at politics a lot more. And those figures are wrong because things have gone to change. There was a public meeting by me, 250 people turned up. Oh, no. a meeting rather than a council meeting. It was called yeah. by, uh, it was Gill's way, it was called by the councillors over the Greenbelt land. Mm -hmm. 250 people for water. Yeah. Yeah. There were organised opposition groups amongst those crowds. Yeah. They knew an awful lot of what was going on. And I think if you don't broadcast this, they're going to say that we're hiding stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Another thing we've noticed about it, just as a member of the public, it's hard to find who to vote for. But with this webcasting, you can put down the names of the people. You can actually see them in action and how they work and realise, are they, you know, are they doing what you want? So for the public, it's a marvellous thing. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else want to make a um, just then, in summary, my my view is that um, I think it is early days to say that, that the viewing figures are, are not really um, that, that very good. It probably wouldn't be at the start. The hope is it would get better. To be honest, we could say no turnout at elections, extra elections, if we follow that through to its logical conclusion. Obviously, um, what we do, <laughs> obviously, what we want to do is encourage more people to get involved, and over time, that may well happen. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking, um, as a consensus view, with the two obvious um, uh, objections. Uh, Jerry, you haven't committed to a I'm not just going to say Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you said you were my little way. I didn't. No, I'm so sorry. Well, actually, I, I, I can't cut my head around why your leader, which I was always telling us that we've got to cut our costs and save money. And yet, we don't need to have this sort of system here. We've got the wonderful Mr. Bracey in power. It doesn't cost, doesn't, don't cost us an end, do you know? Uh, and he provides uh, fantastic things in any case. So why do we need to spend all these massive amounts of money for services that only a tiny number of people? What are they doing? Okay, okay. So let's, I mean, I'm with. Just, well, that is no surprise, right. but thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so uh, from, a, from a, a trying to gather our views together, I think most people are in favour of Continuing. There are obviously the three um, uh, members who uh, have got reservations about that. Um, we are really looking to support the three options. But uh, my suggestion now is that this, our views go back to the um, Director of Governance and that we come back in November for a final decision. Okay? Sure. Yeah. If I may, can I make a suggestion in the, yeah. in the open? Yeah. Does I agree with that, Mr. Chandler? It's just a cost. And I hear what Andrew said before. Uh, happy from from the individual point of view, and two colleagues, to support a trial till the end of this municipal year and then bring it back and let's look at the review of the Yeah, okay. Would you like to include that in the report? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, thank you very much for your contributions to that. Can we, can we agree that we, we move on to the next item on the agenda? And that is the um, I'm not going to take a vote, but it was to gather our views rather than form a objective opinion. Um, but the next item on the agenda is item four, and that is appointment of the panel.
Would you like to give me an idea of why we're going to do that, would you? Yes, um, under the local <coughs> 2011, Council must have in place arrangements under which uh, Council must have arrangements in place under which um, complaints against members can be investigated and decisions on allegations can be made. Um, and so the purpose of this report is to request that this committee formally establishes a standards panel and a standards appeal panel for this municipal year um, in accordance with the Council's constitution and the protocol that we have for dealing with complaints against members. Um, the role and the purpose of the standards panel and the appeal panel are set out um, in the appendix to the report um, and um, I'm sure members are aware that the panel has been appointed in, in previous years. Um, so the recommendations are that um, a, a standards panel and a standards appeal panel be formally established. Um, each of the political groups is requested to confirm the names of the members um, who will be their representatives on both of those panels. Um, to the Director of Governance and Assurance um, and that the committee agrees that the procedure which is um, in Appendix 4 is the uh, procedure that will be used at the panel um, and also we would like to um, establish a provisional date um, for a panel. We do need to arrange a meeting of the standards panel. Um, we don't um, have a requirement at this time for, for an appeal panel, um, however it is possible what may be required uh, during the municipal year, so therefore it's obviously appropriate to establish both the panels now. Okay, thank you, Vicky. Um, from a nomination point of view, I will be the Labour nomination for the panel. Would you like to consider? I'll be the Conservative nomination for the panel. And Councillor Gilchrist. We select the chair, I understand, on the night, um, when we know what the case is, and it will be at one or two members who are not the same political party. What about um, the independent, identifying the independent member to advise us? We need to do that. that um, I don't think we need to establish one, but we will obviously be okay. with them. Okay. The, uh, the panel works with uh, three elected members and who have voting rights, and an independent person who will advise us um, on their views uh, as the process is, is done. And then the appeals panel, our nominee for that will be Brian Kenny, if it's needed. And then we turn the talks. Okay. And, uh, can the appeal panel be the same person who's on the... Oh, yes. Because you're looking at your own decision then, aren't you? Yes, yes. So, I'm not on the council, make sure... Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Can I just check with legal people? There is a facility, if a member can't make it, for a deputy to stand in. There is, yes. Does that deputy have to come from the pool of deputies from the standard committee? Or can it come from any member of the um, we would we would normally want it to be somebody from the from the committee if possible for this development to have the knowledge and experience, but as there are a limited number of members on the um, on the committee, we may have to apply to that with this particular issue. Thank you. And now are you looking for us to uh, confirm the date now? And um, if you have got any suggestions? We, we, we have got a number of potential dates, so okay. if you're happy, maybe if we consult the three members of the board okay. outside okay. and set the board meeting. Okay. Happy with that? Okay. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Um, now, I've got no other um, business, um, so, um, and so I don't need to exclude any members of the public because there's no other urgent business that's excluded either. So, can I say thank you very much, everybody, for coming and for the um, giving you your views. Thank you.